Hello and welcome to my tutorial on incorporating jiggle bones into your uh, custom weapon and hat models for Team Fortress 2 using Blender. I'm not going to go into the specifics of um, the rest of modeling. Um, for a good reference for that, refer to Helljumper's uh, tutorial that you can find on YouTube um, or you can Google for that as well. Um, so really all I'm going to show you is how to incorporate jiggle bones into your final um, model. Um, to start, uh, I have here the um, Ellis cap as well as the imported um, armature for that particular model. Um, what I'm going to start by doing is by making sure that I have this dis all the display properties that I like um, for this particular thing. So the one thing that I do like to do is I like to have names on for these bones. It helps make sure that I'm kind of keeping myself organized and you can do that by clicking the armature um, or the, I'm sorry the object data uh, button for this uh, armature and then clicking names down here. I also sometimes like to use the CTA uh, hedral button which basically when you go into edit mode will change the way that the bone is displayed and you can see here that this is CTA hedral. It gives you the base of the bone is kind of the wider portion, and the point pointed end is going to be your um, uh, your farther end. And then these spheres will represent the joints um, that are connecting each of the bones. Uh, kind of by default, it displays it in stick mode, which is a little bit harder, I think, to see. Um, but you can see here your joints again, and then the bone is kind of right here. And you can see this is your bip head bone, which controls where your model is going to. Um, be positioned on the head of the uh, the player. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start by in edit mode. Um, first of all, I just want to say kind of at the beginning, you're not really going to do anything to change this bib head. You don't want to move it. You don't want to change the size of it. You don't want to do anything funny to it because that controls where your model is positioned um, on the player. And so to get uh, other parts of your model to move, you need to make new bones. And to do that, I'm basically just going to select that bone in edit mode and hit extrude. And you can see here now I have a new bone, um, which is represented by this bar here, this long line. And I'm going to move this into position um, up near where I want my uh, movement to occur. And what I'm going to do for this tutorial is I'm going to basically introduce some jiggle into just the brim of the hat. And the rest of the hat is going to stay um, stationary. So I'm going to move this joint um, which is going to control my movement right to the area that I want the movement to occur around and the rotation to occur around. Now I still need a bone to basically control those um, that brim so I'm going to extrude once more and put this bone kind of right uh, to kind of in the middle of all the vertices that I want to move um, so kind of right there. And you can see that um, uh, that that's going to give me uh, kind of just a very simple skeleton and that's really all you need. The next step is to rename these bones to something that um, makes sense to you. And to do that you go up here to the uh, the bone tab and then select um, the name and just rename it. I like to rename my jiggle bones oops, uh, jiggle one and then this other bone that I created which isn't going to uh, have any movement associated with it is going to be my base bone. So I'm going to call that jiggle base. And then I'm leaving this bip head alone. I'm not doing anything to that again because I don't want to mess with the way that the hat's positioned on the body. Um, and really that's all you need to do to get the, the uh, armature and the skeleton that you're looking for properly um, uh, placed. So uh, after that you go back to object mode and um, you want to attach uh, and parent this uh, model to this armature just like you would um, any other way or any other time when you're trying to attach it to bib head. And to do that you select your hat and then um, shift select your armature and hit control P and then select uh, with empty groups. And you can see here that there's some other options which are more advanced um, and they're all kind of referring to how uh, Blender is going to assign vertices to that skeleton. Now, if you hit empty groups, it basically lets you do everything on your own, uh, which I would recommend until you're learning kind of a little bit more about what you're doing. But you can also use these envelope weights and automatic weights to let Blender automatically assign different parts of the model to the skeleton. But we're going to do with empty groups, 
and then um, we're going to go back to our model and now we're going to assign um, various uh, vertices to different parts of the skeleton and we're going to do that using the vertex groups so I'm going to go into edit mode again with my model and I'm going to go over to object data and then you'll see here that if you did it properly um, uh, you should have vertex groups for each of the bones that you have in your uh, model or in your armature I should say and so we have our bip head, our jiggle base, and our jiggle one. Now I'm just going to make sure that there's not already some vertices assigned to uh, to the armature, so I'm just going to hit select for each of these, and there's just to make sure that there's nothing there. And see, this actually does have some, so I'm going to remove those. I don't want those to be assigned there. And then I'm also going to go to jiggle one. I'm going to select and see there's some there. I'm going to remove that. And hopefully now, yeah. So now nothing's assigned, and that's kind of how we want to start it off with. Oops. Um, and then basically what you want to do is you want to pick the parts of your model that you want to, to move. And for me, it's just the vertices that are part of the bill. So I'm going to just select just those vertices, and I'm going to assign them to my jiggle bone, so jiggle one. And I'm going to come down here, I'm going to hit assign. And I can tell that they're correctly assigned because I can hit select and deselect to make sure that that's working properly. And then I'm going to hit control I to basically get all the non-movable um, vertices, and I'm going to attach those to the, the base because that's not going to have any movement associated with it. And I can again confirm that those are correctly assigned by hitting select and deselect. And really that's it. Um, you're pretty much done now with getting your vertices assigned to the to the skeleton. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save that and I'm going to export it just like you normally would. And then the way to actually get movement associated with that is to uh, put a jiggle bone command into your QC file. So I have a generic jiggle bone command. You can find uh, a lot of instruction on all of these different commands um, in the Velve developer community Wikipedia entry for jiggle bones. And this is just a, kind of a generic one, which I kind of pre-made for this. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I'll show you kind of a little bit more information about that. But I'm just going to kind of copy and paste that from the tutorial just to get a basic idea of what we're doing and I'm going to go ahead and compile my model. And now you can see that our cap has a nice jiggle to it. And the way that this jiggles is completely dependent on a couple of things. One is the orientation of your bone in Blender. So because I have uh, my bone um, facing out towards the bill, a lot of the rotation occurs, uh, most of the rotation occurs kind of around it like this. If I want this to flap up and down, a better way to do this would be um, to go back into my model, select my um, jiggle one bone, and instead of doing, um, instead of putting it along the edge of the brim, I can put it around uh, in a horizontal plane. So kind of putting this back here and then putting it in a horizontal plane so that I can have my bill kind of flap up and down and it'll rotate around that the length of that bone. So I'm going to go ahead and um, export that again and recompile and refresh my model viewer and you can see now I get a different type of rotation and it's up around this way. I still get a little bit of lateral and um, rotation but I also get the flapping up and down rotation too. Now you can also adjust the way that your jiggles uh, go into the game by adjusting some of these values. So just real quickly I'll show you some of this stuff but you'll find a lot more information if you look on the Wikipedia entry. So the stiffness basically refers to how stiff of a spring your bone is, um, is in your model and by increasing this value you're basically making a much stiffer spring which means you'll have a much higher frequency of um, of jiggle in your model. So you can see that now um, it rotates much quicker and uh, much more jerky mov movement um, whereas my up and down movement is unchanged because I only did this in the yaw um, plane I didn't do this in the pitch plane which is basically referring to um, yaw is kind of um, uh, up and down, you know, kind of along that horizontal plane is the yaw, and then uh, around the circumference of the bone, uh, rotating around it, is the pitch. 
like that. So that's the one thing you can change. You can also change the damping. Um, so if I decrease this damping value to one, uh, basically what that'll do is that'll uh, prolong the amount of time that the spring um, uh, moves. So after you stop moving it. So you can see now that after I stop moving it, it just keeps rotating for quite a while afterwards. And that's because I put my damping value very low. If I set that very high, it'll only rotate for a split second and then it'll stop on its own. And then the last thing that I want to show you here is your angle constraint. That's another really important one. This basically tells the model, um, the jiggle bone, how far it can move before it has to stop. And if I have it set to 15 degrees right now, but if I increase that to 90 degrees, I'll have a much more um, uh, significant amount of rotation um, in all directions. And you can see that I can get a bigger amount of movement by increasing the angle constraint like that. And that's a bit too much, but you get the idea. And that's pretty much it. You can kind of tinker with the other values and, um, and the orientation of your jiggle bones to get exactly the look that you want. Um, you can do rigid versus, um, uh, versus springy um, sort of like flexible uh, jiggle bones which will affect the way that it moves and really it's just a matter of what exactly you want your model to do and uh, experimenting um, and that's pretty much it if you have any questions um, feel free to uh, you know send a comment and I'll try to get back to you if I can um, but uh, hopefully that this will make it a bit easier for people to get the movement into their models that they were hoping for and get more natural looking models uh, thanks for watching